Hey everybody and welcome to AQ's Blog and Grill. We're excited today to have Glenn Drummond with us. Now Glenn is the Chief Innovation Officer at Quarry Integrated Communications. And we're going to talk today about something that everyone is talking about. And it's called personalization. And we need to really dig into this because it's the current, it's the current buzz. And, and let's separate a little bit of the buzz from the fuzz and uh, get down to how marketers, how business people can really use personalization to build uh, a business. So welcome, Glenn. Well, good to be back, huh? Good to see you. Um, so w what's up with personalization these days? Is it simply a silver bullet? Is it a panacea? What's going on out there? Right. So there's a tremendous amount of technology that's being made available in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, the theory that is being used uh, to sell this technology goes like this. Personalization because results. And that's pretty compelling, right? We yes. live in a world that's driven by data. People see some results because personalization technology has been applied and it becomes a de facto argument that of course you should use personalization technology. An argument that I don't disagree with. But could we go a little bit deeper? And in fact, you know, can we be digging ourselves a hole using technology along with some pretty weak theory about how personalization is actually working? Mm -hmm. um, and is that going to create a limitation for the application of this technology? Are we on the precipice of this um, you know, valley of disillusionment that often follows the introduction of a technology when uh, the results that people were really hoping for don't really pan out? Right. So from a geographical point of view, I understand that the, the valley of disillusionment is right beside the valley of death. <laughs> you know, they're not far apart. So once you get delusioned, you could be... Right. Right. Okay. So how then to better think about personalization? Well, how to use the strategy than just simply a tactic? Well, I'm glad you asked, Alan. I just happened to bring along a prop here. Oh my goodness. It's a ladder. <laughs> it's a ladder. And, and what could this ladder signify, I wonder? Well, I'd like to introduce the idea of a personalization ladder. Okay. So if we think about, you know, at the top of the ladder, we've got sales. That's what everybody's shooting for. Right. And let's say at the bottom of the ladder, we've got personalization technology. Okay. The interesting thing is, maybe it's a little like Nanaimo. You can't get, you know, here... <laughs> from here <laughs> right. without a couple of steps in oh, between. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what could those steps be? Well, let's think about some of the ideas that have been important in marketing for a long, long time and are important in digital experience and the digital economy. And let's start to think about them in relationship to personalization technology. Now to get there, I'd like to introduce a little anecdote. So, and you may you may be familiar with this sort of situation. When machines talk to you, uh, it's called behavioral targeting. Yes. Right? Um, but how do you feel when a machine talks to you? Do you? Does it give you a warm, glowing feeling in your you know, when your toaster tells you your toast is ready? Uh, <laughs> when your car tells you, you know, you know, please connect your seatbelt. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I pulled out of a um, I pulled out of a parking lot. And there was one of these robotic armed mm -hmm. uh, parking things. Yep. And it said, have a nice day. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself the question as I pull out of there. It's like, okay, the machine has told me to have a nice day, but how should I respond to that? You know, is that a brand contact? Is that a, is that a personalization step that's somehow going to uh, make me closer to that brand? I think the answer is no. It's an entirely inauthentic experience. Yes, right? that's right. So... Given that observation, given that you know we have the capacity to make machines talk to people, not just you know at robotic arm situations, something trivial, but as we travel through our internet experience, machines are talking to us all the time. They are already. Yeah. Uh, so how can we make that feel more authentic? Well, maybe it helps to think about personalization. Might not take you directly to sales. It might not take you directly to even brand affinity but it might take you closer to engagement. Okay. So if personalization technology is available to present to you a set of choices that are more likely to engage you, that's a step. And if that engagement um, 
can be in experiences where you see that there is some sort of a real insight into who you are and what you want to do, then that's a path to affinity. Right. And if you sense some affinity with the values, uh, with the understanding this brand is showing towards you, mm -hmm. and that affinity you know, starts to become a basis for brand preference, you know, brand preference, right. we know, yeah. is on the path to sales. Exactly. And I guess, too, when you think of that brand preference, the extension of that is brand reference. So then you're actually telling your friends, uh, either in person or online, word of modem, that, hey, these guys, these guys kind of get me. Right. I feel good about that brand. Right. Because that seems to me still the most valuable part of, of building a, a, a community, a, a customer base, if you will. Right, right. So if we are able to sort of re-theoritize personalization in the context of these ideas that have been integral to marketing for a long time, right. then we can start to see the relationship between personalization and brand strategy. Right. Deep customer insight and personalization strategy. And we can start to move away from simplistic metrics like, you know, just a simple A-B test. We put the personalization technology on and we got more results. Therefore, the personalization technology worked. Yeah. Well, that may be an overly simple way of thinking about right. it. And it may not allow for the kind of strategies, integrated strategies that link together the social, the referral-based work, the, the work in core segmentation, brand strategy, and insight that all form part of a modern marketer's toolkit. Okay. So as far as we know, are, are there modern marketers that are using this thinking uh, to build their business as opposed to just the doing? I could tell you, but then I'd have to shoot you. Oh, <laughs> that's not the first time I've heard that, Glenn. <laughs> Uh, and usually you're not as friendly when you say that to, to me, but I appreciate the I appreciate the warning. So who's going to take advantage of this first? Who's going to leverage this first? Is it going to be a fintech who knows so much about us already? You know where they can they might even be to, able to predict behavior mm -hmm. with more accuracy than than most. Is it going to be in healthcare? Um, is there a particular category that's going to say we are actually going to use this personalization thinking? to make something good happen. Right. I'm not sure about the verticals, okay. but what I can see is that B2B marketing has moved online with great speed. Yes. And B2B enterprise marketing, because the value of the deal is so large, and because digital channels are now really important, even in the very large deals, Right that uh, the kind of rewards for a B2B marketer to get this really right mm -hmm. are strong. Right. And their options of not getting it right are diminished because the digital experience is such an influential part of the overall buying journey, even for categories that once could be economically served with an enterprise sales force without the need for a great deal of interaction outside of that. Right. So content marketing, which also has been a bit of a buzz story uh, over the last couple of years, is it going to now be able to be better content uh, marketing or, or context marketing because of the advancement in personalization software and personalization strategy? Yeah, undoubtedly. I mean, we've, we've got a, a rapidly evolving suite of tools. Um, more and more of which can be uh, connected in the cloud through APIs, uh, providing a set of possibilities that uh, are unprecedented. And those organizations that are both leveraging the technology and leveraging a critical approach to the theory mm -hmm. of how it's applied, right. and leveraging you know, the good foundational disciplines around customer insight and brand strategy, and bringing those three things together are the ones that are undoubtedly going to win in this environment. Right. And I think, too, if you're, if you're critically thinking about this, then I'm going to pick up the words from uh, Jay Baer, the uh, very successful writer, presenter, who says, you know, the, the future is about help, not hype. Hmm. And, and it's really going to be easier to help someone in the B2B sectors make the correct decision or a better decision if you're treating personalization as an authentic way to build those relationships, influence behavior, 
make more margin. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah, it's true. And the, uh, the thing is that uh, meaning and identity are closely related issues. Yes. And uh, B2B buying journeys, the more we learn about them, the more we learn the role of people's identity and their sense of meaning in their work right. uh, is a part of the way they want to go about being a B2B customer. Right. And it influences the way they make their buying decisions. Sure. So insofar as this content experience can put them in contact with you know values and you know identity values that yep. they relate to um, you're on your way up this ladder connecting personalization to yeah. sales cool so in our discussions then it's quite obvious to me glenn that you are a proponent you're an evangelist for the sales funnel well the sales funnel that's a very interesting metaphor we mm -hmm. use yes. and it does uh, imply such a thing as gravity <laughs> Yes. And, uh, you know, gravity is not easy to find in contemporary sales funnels. People come and go yeah. in and out of that sales process right. at their will. Yeah. Um, so that metaphor is one that's a little self-serving mm -hmm. uh, and it implies a power vested in the hands of the seller that probably underestimates the power that's in the hands of the buyer. Yeah, well, I think it was a great model in the product marketing world yeah. and where, where sales were, you know, interruptive, they were aggressive, they were, you know, they were forcing right. things through the funnel or people believe there was gravity pulling it through right. in a very linear way. But we know that it's, it's more complicated than that. It is. And I think that the language of the buying journey has more or less replaced the language of the sales funnel yeah. uh, in a lot of organizations' vocabulary just because they've, they've come to realize that while that model helped to explain some things, it helped not see other things that were important. Right. So when you simplify things, that's good. But when you dumb things down, that's bad. Right. And I think that's where I brought up the sales funnel thing because I think if, you're, if we're still using that thinking, it, it isn't just because it's simple, it's because it's easy. Yeah. And so then you move to personalization and you go, oh, uh, boy, there's some depth here. I'd have to think about that. Or I can just simply say, hey, we're using, a, we're using personalization software and we're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Similar? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the human mind likes to be economical with glucose and uh, people don't like to think any more than they have to. Economical with glucose. Okay. I'm going to be using that expression with people that I know and say, you're being very economical with your glucose today, aren't you? <laughs> They'll never know. They'll never know. Okay. Yes. So the mind does want to go to the simplest and, and, and get an understanding somewhat. And uh, we just can't do that when all of these big budgets and these, the, these future dreams are at stake here for B2B marketers. Well, at the very least, I think we could look at it as a, a remarkable opportunity loss. We have opportunities today that we've never had before. Right. And uh, to take an overly simplistic approach to personalization is probably to leave a great deal of the money that's on the table. It's also to leave behind lessons that marketers have already learned and not integrate them into these formulas. So this is not just about numbers and it's not just about plugging in technology. It's about reintegrating all of the classic disciplines of marketing into a new world that's powered by these technologies. Yeah, wow, that's exciting. Glenn Drummond has joined us today, Glenn Sinclair Drummond, I might say, uh, to talk about personalization. He brought his ladder with him, which I think was a very uh, inspired uh, model, uh, prop, if you will. And uh, we're always glad to have uh, Glenn drop by. So if you're thinking about personalization as a tactic, okay, start thinking a little bit more strategically about how that technology could really be used uh, on a, in a deeper, more meaningful way. So just some food for thought, some fast food for thought here at AQ's Blog and Grill. Thank you, Glenn. All right, thanks, Al. Use Blog and Grill.